Hello, I'm Professor John Kelly and this is the Weber Auto YouTube channel. This is the fourth in a series of videos on the history of automatic transmission fluids. The first episode in the series was just a general review of automatic transmission fluid history. The second episode was the 80 year history of General Motors transmission fluids. The third episode was the 69 year history of Ford transmission fluids. And this video will cover 67 years of Chrysler automatic transmission fluid history. In 1938, for the 1939 model year, Chrysler released a new type of transmission assembly, and they called it the fluid drive. And this was released in the 1939 uh, Chrysler Custom Imperial. Now, what was unique about this is that it still had a three-speed manual transmission, uh, which has a clutch disc, a pressure plate, and the flywheel that you can see rotating right here on the top. But that part would normally be directly connected to the crankshaft of the engine, but not on the fluid drive. The fluid drive has the clutch disc, pressure plate, and flywheel connected to a fluid coupling, a fluid drive. And the fluid coupling has two impellers inside of it, and you can see this upper impeller rotates with the clutch disc, pressure plate, and flywheel. The lower impeller would rotate with the engine. And it's just a fluid coupling uh, between these two. And the way this worked is you would just step on the clutch pedal. It still had a clutch pedal. Um, they called it the safety clutch. And you would pick which gear of the transmission you would want to drive around in. And then you would let the clutch out. And you could do that with the engine running uh, and the vehicle stopped and it wouldn't kill the engine because the fluid coupling here, the fluid drive, would just slip uh, at low speeds. But as you accelerated, then it would transfer power through this fluid coupling and make the vehicle move. This fluid coupling required a special Mopar fluid drive fluid. <laughs> Mopar fluid drive fluid. And uh, as you can see here on this fluid coupling, there's a drain plug right here. There's a drain plug on the other side. And you could change the fluid in this fluid coupling. Um, Chrysler learned over time, though, that the fluid did not need to be changed uh, because it's in a hermetically sealed housing. This fluid coupling is totally sealed. And come to find out if if you don't let any additional air in, any additional oxygen in, the fluid will react with the oxygen and the oxygen will cause a little bit of oxidation of the fluid, but then you're left with nothing but nitrogen uh, in place of the air in there. And this fluid coupling is only filled to about 80% with fluid. The rest is air. So with the fluid coupling 80% full of the fluid and 20% full of nitrogen, there was nothing to cause any future oxidation uh, of that fluid, which would break it down and cause varnish and cause it to fail and need to be changed. So eventually on the later model fluid drives, these drain plugs were taken away because Chrysler found out that they did not need to change the fluid in there because it's in a sealed housing. And this, I guess, is what you could call the first of what could be considered a lifetime fluid. And there's a lot of lifetime fluids out there today. And it's, uh, I'll, I think I'll shoot a separate video on lifetime fluids and what that really means. Um, but it has to do with, is it in a sealed housing? And can you prevent people from adding additional air or dirt or uh, whatever else, the wrong fluids, uh, into that housing. Because if you can prevent them from doing that, that fluid will last a very long time. So anyway, that, that's for a different video. Okay, so we've got this fluid drive, the fluid coupling that connects to a manual transmission in 1939 and 1940. In 1941 and 1942, they connect a different transmission to the fluid drive called the M3 that has some automated shifting of the manual transmission. And then there's World War II. Uh, after the war in 1945, they introduced the M5 transmission that still connected 
to the fluid drive, and it it uh, was a four-speed transmission that would uh, ma would be automatically shifted. A four-speed manual transmission automatically shifted, and then there was an M6 transmission later on that was connected to the fluid drive, also uh, up until 1953. 54, somewhere around there, uh, that also used uh, either this fluid coupling with the fluid drive fluid, or there was a model that actually used motor oil, the engine oil, and shared the engine oil uh, with the fluid coupling and the crankshaft uh, in the oil pan of the engine. So there are several, well, there were four, four different, well, possibly five different physical variations of trans manual transmissions and fluid couplings connections there and then there are all kinds of names that the marketing uh, people gave it depending on whether it was in a Chrysler, a Dodge, a Plymouth or a DeSoto and there's a magazine right here a uh, lubrication magazine published by the Texas company which later on became Texaco and this is uh, November of 1954, volume 40, number 11. And this entire magazine is on the evolution of the Chrysler Power Flight automatic tr transmission. And it goes through in great detail the history of the fluid coupling. And there's a table in here that shows all the variations of the fluid coupling and all the different transmissions connected to it until they finally in 1953 or for the 1953 model year in 1952 came up with Chrysler's first fully automatic transmission the 1953 power flight two-speed automatic transmission right here behind me so I haven't had a chance to take this one apart yet and play with it yet but this was a two-speed transmission for the 1953 model year, uh, it's Chrysler's very first planetary gear set based automatic transmission. Now the Power Flight transmission, the 1953 Power Flight transmission, uh, came along a full 14 years after General Motors had developed their first automatic transmission. Uh, I don't know why Chrysler waited so long. Uh, in the Ford uh, automatic transmission uh, history video I poked fun at Ford for waiting 11 years but Chrysler waited 13 years uh, before they actually 14 years uh, bef before they uh, finally came up with their own uh, fully automatic transmission and by fully automatic I mean it has a fluid coupling that eliminates the need for a clutch disc clutch pedal you don't need a fluid you don't need any of the clutch related components uh, with the fully automatic uh, 1953 Chrysler Power Flight. The fluid coupling takes care of that. And then the rest of the transmission, it's only a two-speed, but it's automatically shifted. So there's no shift lever that needs shifting. This starts in first gear, goes to second, unlike a lot of the Ford transmissions that started in second, went to third. Some people thought they were only two-speed transmissions. There was a low that you could manually select. Um, so it did have three gear ratios. It was a three-speed, but uh, typically you only use two. So I've got a manual here from a 1954 Chrysler Power Flight. This is a service manual for that transmission. And in here, under uh, fluid lubrication and maintenance, it says to check the fluid level every 1,000 miles and it says to add automatic transmission fluid type A up to the low mark if the car has not been driven immediately before checking. So it calls for a type A automatic transmission fluid. So this is a can of original 1954 Mopar type A automatic transmission fluid. Now, you need to understand that Chrysler used General Motors automatic transmission fluid specifications from the very first day of the Chrysler Power Flight transmission there all the way up through uh, the mid-1960s. And so they just 
built their transmissions and used the existing General Motors transmission fluid specifications. So the Type A fluid that you see here is a General Motors Type A specification. And all licensed General Motors Type A fluids had to be tested by the Armour uh, Institute and receive an Armour qualification number. So right here on the top of this can, it has an AQ for Armour qualification and then it uh, has a dash ATF for automatic transmission fluid and then a dash 600. This was the 600th Type A fluid licensed under the General Motors Armor Qualification uh, Standard. And it tells us right here on the back of this uh, can that this Mopar Type A fluid has been approved under the Armor Institute Qualification Number of AQATF 600. So that's pretty cool. Um, so a, a beautiful can. I, I think it's an a awesome, uh, awesome find. Uh, but it says right on it, Type A fluid. And that is what was used in the original power flight transmissions and the sub subsequent torque flight transmissions that came out in 1956. And that fluid continued to be used until General Motors made a revision in 1958 to their fluid specifications. And then they released what is called the Type A Suffix A fluid specification. So there were some improvements made in the material that transmission fluid is made of. Transmission fluid is made of base stock oils, just like motor oils are, except transmission fluids have a different additive package for automatic transmissions for many, many reasons. Um, and these old original fluids were not red. They were the same color as, as uh, motor oil. Uh, it wasn't until uh, the mid to late 60s that transmission fluids uh, received a standardized red color. And then even today, they're not all red. It's not a requirement. But the red was added for leak detection. So here's a can of Mopar uh, automatic transmission fluid type A suffix A. This uh, also says this type A suffix A fluid has been uh, approved by the Armour Institute, which was the company General Motors hired to test fluids produced by other manufacturers to make sure that they met specifications. All right, here's a little bit later can of the same type A suffix A fluid uh, from Mopar. And this tells us the same thing. This is just a newer can. This is a 1964 can. That previous one I showed you was 1959. So both of these type A suffix A fluids were used in Chrysler transmissions. And Chrysler, after the type A suffix A fluid specification was, was released, uh, released the Chrysler Torque Flight A904 in 1960 and the Torque Flight A727 in 1962. So now Chrysler had four fully automatic transmissions uh, that were out there by 1962. And all of these were serviced by the Type A suffix A fluid now uh, because it replaced the Type A fluid that was used uh, earlier. All right, Chrysler continued to use the Type A suffix A fluids in their automatic transmissions until 1966 when they finally produced their own automatic transmission fluid standard. They called it the Type MS-3256 fluid, and it had characteristics that were very close to the Type A suffix A, but had some minor differences, and they didn't need to pay the Armour Institute to have their fluid tested for compatibility with General Motors when they could uh, produce their own fluid specification. So that was 1966 for their very first fluid uh, specification. Then in 1968, Chrysler released another transmission fluid update uh, called the MS-4228 fluid. Now there were improvements in oil refining and in producing of what is called today base stock oils. And there were some major improvements that made 
the base stock oils that automatic transmissions are made from and motor oil uh, better quality to where they last longer. So there was an improvement made in those and General Motors released the Dexron automatic transmission fluid in 1967. Chrysler released their new fluid specification in 1968, the MS4228 fluid specification. These two fluids had similar characteristics and uh, they were backwards compatible with previous Chrysler fluids. I actually have a can of 1978 Mopar branded Dexron automatic transmission fluid and it says it mixes freely with all approved Dexron or type A suffix A fluids. So up to this point there was only Dexron. There was no Dexron 2 or 3 or anything else. And uh, this was a fully licensed General Motors uh, can of Dexron with a license number of B11536 uh, right there on the lid of the can. So Chrysler sold Mopar branded Dexron automatic transmission fluids for use in, in some of their transmissions. And they, they still called uh, for that. Now in, in 1971, uh, several years after the 1968 release of the uh, new Chrysler fluid specification, there was a, an improvement made, a great improvement made in the production of base stock oil. And this improvement in refining produced what we call today a Group 2 base stock oil. Now these groups weren't even officially categorized until 1993 by the American Petroleum Institute. But looking back in history, the refining method that was used in 1971 produced what we now call Group 2 base stock oils. And those eventually worked their way into automatic transmission fluids and gave us longer service intervals in between having to change the fluid. So the next fluid specification change for Chrysler was in 1973. And they released what is called the ATF Plus fluid. Uh, it has a, a, a fluid type of MS7176. And this change in 1973, uh, along with the General Motors change to a Dexron 2 instead of regular Dexron, they called it the 2C, and in 1974, the Ford change to the Type CJ fluid was the result of removing sperm well oil as an additive to these fluids. Sperm well oil was a corrosion and rust inhibitor that would coat internal pieces uh, in axles and transmissions and so on to prevent corrosion. Well, they had to quit using that by 1974, I believe. And so they had to reformulate automatic transmission fluids to uh, come up with another uh, type of additive to do the same thing. So they released the original ATF plus fluid, Chrysler did, in 1973. And after that, they released the Torque Flight A99 in, in 1974 and in 1978 the A404 uh, transaxle, which was a three-speed. So, so far, all of Chrysler's transmissions, other than the very first one behind me here, uh, are three-speed uh, transmissions. Now, in 1974, improvements in oil refining uh, produced what we now call a Group 4 base oil. And it was used in motor oils, uh, and this would be considered a fully synthetic uh, motor oil. So this was the first time that a synthetic base oil had been used in a motor oil. And it would eventually show up in automatic transmission fluids, but not until 15 years later in 1989, when Mobil released the very first fully synthetic automatic transmission fluid from a Group 4 base oil. So the original ATF fluid had similar specifications to the General Motors Dexron 2 automatic transmission fluid. So here's a 1978 can of Mopar Dexron 2, but it's a licensed Dexron 2 fluid. It has a license number of D20666, it looks like, uh, on the top of this can. And this was used in Chrysler transmissions uh, for the ATF plus 
fluid specification. Around that same time period, Mobile was releasing uh, what you could call some of the first universal fluids <laughs> out there. They started playing that game with marketing. Notice this says Dexron 2 fluids for General Motors, Chrysler, and AMC vehicles. And when you look at the lid of this thing, it's only, it's Dexron 2 is the only license number that it actually has. Um, but it says it's compatible with all other GM approved ATFs approved by General Motors, Chrysler, and American Motors to meet warranty requirements. I'm sure that would only be true if it called for Dexron automatic transmission fluid, which was used by General Motors, Chrysler, and AMC in some of their transmissions. Okay, I have another interesting can here of Mopar ATF, uh, Dexron 2. Uh, it shows us here. And this is from... 1984 uh, this can and notice it's a license Dexron 2 on the top here with the license number of D21134 uh, the interesting thing about this can uh, from 1984 is this is this can was produced after another bailout of uh, Chrysler Corporation and uh, it's kind of funny I'll show you here on the back Right here on the bottom, it says, uh, distributed by the new Chrysler Corporation, Detroit, Michigan. And it, first time I read that, I thought, the new Chrysler Corporation. Then I realized um, that, yeah, they had, they had gone through uh, another uh, hard time like they've done many, many times. So this particular one um, of Dexron 2 automatic transmission fluid says it meets uh, Dexron 2 and Dexron and Ford Type CJ and the older General Motors Type A suffix A fluids. So a can of a little bit newer but still Dexron 2 automatic transmission fluid with the Mopar, Mopar brand. All right, now, by the end of the 70s, um, the U.S. government corporate average fuel economy regulations were kicking in. Uh, they started in 1978, and it made the average fuel economy of passenger cars have to increase from the pretty low amount that it was at uh, prior to this. And this was all a result of the 1973 uh, oil embargo, uh, the Arab oil embargo. And in 1975, under President Nixon, a new law went into effect called the Corporate Average Fuel Economy Requirement. And that forced the automobile manufacturers to have to come up with ways of improving the fuel economy on their vehicles. So, so a couple of ways that they accomplished that is instead of using three-speed transmissions where third gear was direct drive, one revolution of the engine crankshaft gave you one revolution of the drive shaft, uh, they decided to start using overdrive transmissions. So they threw in a fourth gear, and the uh, fourth gear would be an overdrive. And then they also started using torque converter clutches uh, inside of the torque converter. And a torque converter clutch would stop the slipping that could occur uh, inside of a fluid coupling and lock these two pieces together so that the entire assembly turned as one piece. So that's a torque converter clutch. So in the in the late 70s and early 80s, those transitions started to take place in the industry. And as a result of adding a torque converter clutch where it has to apply and release, uh, they had some shuttering problems that, that we still have today in some transmissions um, that needed to be addressed. And so Chrysler came out with a new transmission fluid in 1980 called the ATF Plus 2 and it's a type MS7176D fluid. And after the release of that, uh, they released uh, one, two, three, four, five, six more automatic transmissions between 1980 and, and 1993, 
We have the A413, the A470, the A670, the A604, the A500, and the A518. The first three of those were three speeds, but the last three were four speeds and some with electronic uh, controls. And these had torque converter clutches uh, in the majority of them. All right, so there was an ATF plus two fluid. I've looked all over the place. I cannot find on eBay or Amazon or anywhere even a photograph of ATF plus two or ATF plus uh, fluids. So if any of you have a, a bottle of that laying around or a can of that laying around, I'd love to have a, a photograph of the front and the back of that thing. So that was 1980. In 1989, Mobile released the first Mobile One fully synthetic automatic transmission fluid. And it was made from a Group 4 base oil that had been produced or learned how to produce uh, 15 years earlier in 1974. They had been using fully synthetic in motor oils, optional motor oils, uh, since then. But this was the first time a Mobile One synthetic transmission fluid was available. I can't find a can of that anywhere either. So if any of you have access to one of those, if you could send me a photograph of the front and the back of that, I'd, I would greatly appreciate that. All right, in 1993, Chrysler released another fluid specification called the ATF Plus 3 or the Type MS 7176E. Now this change was made in response to the use of electronic controls in automatic transmissions. Chrysler and Toyota were, to f were the first vehicle manufacturers to market with electronic control transmissions in 1988. And then by 1993, Chrysler had released the A606 front wheel drive uh, electronic control transmission, and in 1994, the A618. Uh, all of these had electronic controls, and so we needed fluid that could flow through shift solenoids and pressure control solenoids, uh, not only when it's hot, because almost any fluid could do it when it was hot, but in cold weather situations where the fluid would get more viscous, where it would get uh, thicker, for lack of a better term. Also in 1993, uh, another refining method uh, was introduced that produced what's called a group three base oil. So up to up to this point, we had a group one, a group two, a group four, as we know them today. They, they weren't called that back then. But now there's a group three that definitely has worked its way into automatic transmission fluids uh, today. Uh, also in the 1990s, a group two plus base oil was produced. And the two plus was basically the group two but with a viscosity index that was always on the higher end of the Group 2 range. Okay, so 1993, Chrysler releases the ATF Plus 3 transmission fluid. I also cannot find a can or bottle of that uh, anywhere and would love to have a photograph of the front and back of one of those if any of you have one laying around. Okay, by the 1996 model year, vehicles with the OBD2 system had to be phased in to 100% compliance. Uh, there were some f early phase-in vehicles in 1994 and 1995, but one of the requirements of OBD2 for 1996 was that it monitor for an engine misfire. And it would do that by monitoring the rotational speed speed fluctuations of the engine crankshaft. Well, as it turned out, the old design traditional torque converter clutch that solidly locked the engine to the input shaft of the transmission uh, was causing some false P0300 or series trouble codes, uh, which are engine misfire trouble codes. And it would do that if any of you have driven or ridden in a vehicle with a manual transmission, you know that when you let off on the throttle, the vehicle slows down and the engine kind of surges or lurches there for a moment. Uh, these torque converter clutches were causing that to happen. And it would affect the rotational speed of the crankshaft and cause a false misfire um, detection. And so a new style of torque converter clutch was introduced. Uh, General Motors called it the, the variable capacity converter clutch. Uh, others called it a controlled slip converter clutch, but basically what it would do is instead of locking these two impellers together, 
it would allow them, well, it would almost lock them, but it would allow them to slip at a slow speed, like somewhere around 35 RPM. Well, that slow controlled slip also caused a shuddering issue where it would slip, grip, slip, grip, slip, grip, shudder. <laughs> so we had this problem in the late 70s. We had it again in the mid 80s. We're still having it today. And they keep changing fluid uh, designs and specifications and additive packages and base oil packages and to try to uh, try to address this. So Chrysler released a new fluid specification for that particular uh, system and there's an SAE document from 1998 it's document number 982674 and it's called the development and introduction of Chrysler's new automatic transmission fluid and it goes through there's probably 12 pages here of very detailed information on the development of the ATF plus four fluid specification. And it tells us right in here that this fluid is made from a group three base oil, which had just been produced five years earlier uh, in 1993. So here's 1998, Chrysler's jumping right in and getting a group three base oil, which is a high, high quality uh, base oil that doesn't need as many additives as a group two or a group one base oil to operate uh, properly. It still needs additives for different transmission functions, depending on the transmission design, but uh, this ATF plus four fluid is a high quality fluid, and it's called the uh, type MS9602 fluid. I have a bottle of that right here. So here's the ATF plus four transmission fluid. Now don't confuse this with Toyota's type T4 fluid because they are not the same thing. This is Chrysler's ATF plus four. It, it tells me right on the back of this that the ATF plus four is fully compatible with all automatic transmissions where the original ATF plus, ATF plus two, and ATF plus three uh, automatic transmission fluids were specified. So ATF plus four. This is what is still used today in 2019. If you get a six speed automatic transmission made by Chrysler, not the Ison one uh, that they use also, but a six speed Chrysler transmission. So the, the 68 RFE and, and there's a, a couple others. Uh, it's those use this automatic transmission fluid, the ATF plus four. So after the ATF plus four uh, fluid was released, they released, looks like six more automatic transmissions. The 42 RLE in 2003, the 40 and 41 TES in 2007. Uh, those are both four speeds. The 62 TE and TEA in, in 2007, that's a, their first six speed. And then the 68, 65 and 66 RFE transmissions all the way up through today still use the ATF plus four. So it's a high quality, long life automatic transmission fluid for Chrysler built automatic transmissions. Okay, now Chrysler uh, also uses transmissions made by other, autom or other transmission manufacturers. So for example, Chrysler uses the JATCO CVT in, in several of their vehicles since the 2007 model year. Yeah, 2007 model year. So the JATCO CVT. I think the original Dodge Caliber had a CVT in it, but it's still used in uh, some Jeep uh, models today. And this CVTF plus four fluid uh, is made for those JATCO CVTs. And it tells me right on the back of this thing that it's approved by Chrysler Engineering uh, for smooth and quiet operation, provides a superior lubrication to wear, and here's the interesting part. It meets the Nissan NS2 specifications. So Nissan, who is the either the total owner or the majority shareholder of the JATCO um, 
transmission uh, facility and if you buy a Nissan you're pretty much getting a JATCO CVT if you get an automatic transmission so this Chrysler's CVT F plus 4 fluid meets the same specification as the Nissan NS-2 fluid specification so that's for Chrysler CVTs then in 2008 in Ram pickup trucks with the Cummins engine Chrysler started using a six-speed automatic transmission made by Eisen Seeky, the Eisen Corporation, which is majority shareholder owned by Toyota. So it's kind of funny. We've got a, a Dodge Ram truck with a Cummins engine and a Toyota automatic transmission. If you want the, the maximum amount of torque available from that Cummins uh, engine, you have to get the automatic transmission with it. It used to be just the opposite. You would not get the Chrysler automatic transmission because it couldn't hold up. You would get the manual transmission instead. But this ASRC fluid are, is for the three different models of the Eisen Seeky uh, automatic, six-speed automatic transmission used with the Cummins diesel in the Ram pickup trucks. So there was a initially an AS a 69 RC transmission and then a AS 68 RC and then a AS 66 RC so starting in 2009 for those first two and 2013 for the the last one now it says right on the back of this that um, recommended for you this fluid is recommended for use in transmissions made by ice and Seeky requiring the type T4 fluids. Now that's not the Chrysler ATF plus four fluid. We're talking the Toyota ATF uh, type T4 fluid. And uh, that should make sense because Ison is a Toyota uh, owned company and has made transmissions for many, many years. And their T4 fluid is a really good fluid. But uh, from what I'm reading here, the ASRC fluid can be used in vehicles that need the Toyota Type T4 fluid. And it doesn't say just the opposite can be true, that you could use Toyota Type T4 in the ASRCs, but I suspect it's the same fluid. But I don't have any evidence of that, so don't uh, quote me on that. But that's the ASRC fluid for the six-speed Ison transmissions that you can get with the uh, Dodge or Ram pickup trucks. All right, in 2013, Chrysler started using the ZF8HP70 automatic transmission in some pickup trucks and passenger cars, the, the Dodge Charger, the Chrysler 300C, and so on. You could get the eight-speed automatic transmission. And then in 2015, you could get the 9HP uh, nine-speed automatic transmission in many Chrysler front-wheel drive uh, vehicles. So there's a, a ZF eight-speed rear-wheel drive transmission and a ZF nine-speed front-wheel drive transmission, trans, transaxle. Both of those use this Mopar eight and nine-speed automatic transmission fluid. Now a, a quick check on uh, Amazon and eBay just yesterday most of these fluids are selling for around $29 a quart, which is a lot uh, of money. But this is also a very high quality base oil, uh, synthetic, fully synthetic uh, lubricant here. So if you look in the owner's manual for, for vehicles that came with this eight and nine speed transmission, and you look at the maintenance guide, it tells you this is a lifetime fluid that never needs to be changed. However, if you look at the, the transmission manufacturer's website, ZF, and you search for the 9HP or the 8HP automatic transmission, they sell transmission fluid and filter change kits on there. And they list three different conditions under which that fluid needs to be changed. So let me just read these three to you, um, because I know this is a hot topic. Uh, under normal driving, where you carry passengers and cargo within rec recommended limits uh, on the tire loading information level or label. It's driven on reasonable road surfaces within legal driving limits. 
under these normal driving conditions, you were to replace the automatic transmission fluid and filter every 75,000 miles or 120,000 kilometers. Now, why does Chrysler say it's a lifetime fluid that never, ever needs to be changed? I think it's a marketing gimmick. Since everybody else has lifetime fluid, they're saying ours is too. So that was normal driving is every 75,000 miles. Severe driving is even sooner. So here's the definition of severe driving. Mainly driven in heavy city traffic in hot weather. Mainly driven in hilly or mountainous terrain. Frequent, frequent towing of a trailer. Used in high speed or competitive driving. Used for taxi, police, or delivery service. Under severe driving conditions that I just listed here, replace the automatic transmission fluid and filter every 50,000 miles. All right, then the last condition they list is if you haven't changed it at all and the fluid is eight years old, your vehicle's eight years old and the fluid's never been changed, then it's time to change it again. Now, this is right off of the aftermarket.zf.com uh, website and this is right from ZF so Chrysler I don't, I don't know what you're thinking here it, it doesn't make sense the manufacturer of the transmission says one thing and you're you are saying another uh, there's a disconnect here somewhere um, so anyway that's the eight speed uh, eight and nine speed examples right out of right from the the ZF uh, website so that's the latest fluid that I'm aware of uh, for Chrysler automatic transmissions, the 8 and 9 speed uh, automatic transmission fluids. Okay, just a quick word about aftermarket fluids. Uh, there aren't as many Chrysler universal or multi-vehicle uh, fluids out there as there are Ford and General Motors. But buyer beware, pay attention to the back of the label on the transmission fluid bottles because the front may tell you one thing, the back may tell you another. The front typically has all these claims of it'll fit all these vehicles, but then when you look at the back, it only fits the vehicles that actually called for that fluid anyway, or the transmissions that call for that fluid anyway. And there's very few that I've seen out there that are compatible with the Chrysler ATF Plus 4. Now, ZF sells fluid for the 8HP and the 9HP transmissions that they designed. Uh, and you can find it all over the internet for sale. They call it the Lifeguard 8 fluid. And that's a, instead of this uh, 8 and 9 speed automatic transmission fluid that Chrysler is selling. Uh, on the back of this 8 and 9 speed bottle here, it says it meets ZF specifications. It doesn't tell you which specifications. But if, if ZF is saying to use their Lifeguard 8 fluid uh, in that transmission, the same one that this bottle is used for, uh, I suspect it's the same, but I don't, I don't have any evidence. Price-wise, they're almost exactly the same price. They're still, from ZF, around $29, $30 a quart uh, or liter even for, the, for that fluid. So it's, it's an expensive fully synthetic it says on the lifeguard 8 uh, fluid and there's a new lifeguard 9 fluid out there too for zf's new uh, nine speed transmissions uh, as well so technically you should use chrysler mopar fluids only in your chrysler vehicles but since chrysler uses JATCO automatic transmissions, ISIN automatic transmissions, and ZF automatic transmissions. Uh, what the manufacturer says to use in those transmissions has to carry some weight as well. Um, but I'm a big believer in using the exact fluid called for by the manufacturer, uh, no matter the cost. So that's what I uh, highly recommend for you as well. Okay, well, we've covered 67 years of Chrysler automatic transmission fluids from the very first fluid drive fluid all the way up through the 8 and 9 speed transmission fluid. That's a lot of fluid specification changes over the years, uh, a lot of automatic transmission changes over the years. Uh, it's been interesting to do the research on this. 
and I hope you've enjoyed it. Coming up in the next episode, we will look at the history of Toyota automatic transmissions. Thank you for watching.